What exactly is mechatronics engineering? What does a mechatronics engineer do? How safe is it to get a mechatronics engineering degree? Is mechatronics engineering better than mechanical engineering? These are all really great questions that I've seen floating around on the internet and that some of you have been asking me about. So in this two part video, I'll be answering all of them to help you decide if mechatronics engineering, which is a fairly new discipline, is something you're interested in and would like to pursue. I'll be walking through some of the classes you'll take as a mechatronics engineering major, the job outlook, and the type of jobs you can expect to get after graduation, as well as the salary and prestige of mechatronics engineers. If that sounds good, please don't forget to smash the bell and subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future content just like this that are going to lead you to success. Let's start off with a preliminary evaluation to see if mechatronics engineering is your cup of tea. If you've taken physics class in high school, ask yourself if you enjoyed both mechanics and electricity and magnetism portion. If your answer is yes, there's a good chance that mechatronics engineering is right for you, but obviously there are other factors to consider, which we will be covering shortly. Now, in order to determine if mechatronics engineering is the right fit for you, we must first know exactly what it is. So what in the world is mechatronics engineering? So a little bit about its history. It's actually a fairly new discipline founded in the 1970s, coined by Tetsuru Mori, an engineer at Yoskawa Electric Corporation that manufactures industrial welding, packaging, and material handling robots. Mechatronics engineering combines both mechanical, electrical, and software engineering knowledge to design and manufacture intelligent products featuring cutting edge technologies. As a mechatronics engineer, you will be a jack of all trades and make products smarter using things like sensors, actuators, and microcontrollers in practically any industry. For example, a mechatronics engineer can work with mechanical and electrical engineers to design the automatic parking assist system of a modern car in the automotive industry or or develop microcontroller software and algorithms responsible for controlling life-saving surgical robots in the medical industry. So basically, as a mechatronics engineer, you will need to program, you will CAD, and you will need to design circuits depending on what the job calls for, and you will need to have a systems level understanding of all the products you work on. Now let's dive deeper into the curriculum of mechatronics engineering majors. Remember that mechatronics engineering is a fairly new discipline, so only several schools like Northeastern University, California State University, and Vaughn College offer full-time undergrad degrees, while other schools like California Polytechnic State, San Jose State, and Northern Illinois University offer concentrations. Carnegie Mellon also has this pretty cool program where you can choose to major or minor in robotics if you've already declared a major such as computer science or engineering. You'll find that more schools like the University of Michigan, Georgia Tech, MIT, and Stanford offer master's programs in mechatronics, which is a good option to consider. Also, please keep in mind that the courses I'm about to present are what you should expect to find in a typical undergraduate mechatronics engineering curriculum, and that the curriculum will vary slightly from school to school. So as you probably can guess, mechatronics engineering students take the general set of engineering core courses during their freshman and sophomore year like math, which includes calculus one and two, multivariate calculus, differential equations, statistics, linear algebra, physics one, which is mechanics, and physics two, which is electricity and magnetism, as well as basic chemistry. You will also take programming with a common language such as MATLAB, Python, or C++ for solving engineering problems, and an introductory design course intended to build a problem-solving mindset, computer skills, and familiarity with elements of engineering design. Then there's Mechanics 1, which is statics, covering Newton's laws, center of gravity, and analysis of mechanical structures and equilibrium, as well as Mechanics 2, which is dynamics, where everything is accelerating, and you'll learn concepts like momentum, kinematics, kinetics, and energy. Circuits is another required class that covers DC and AC topics like resistors, capacitors, inductors, and circuit laws, as well as a material science class that introduces how solid materials deform and fail at the microscopic level and various strengthening mechanisms. You will without question take Intro to CAD and at least two to three product design courses teaching you how to design and prototype a physical product using CAD, simulation tools, microcontrollers, and various manufacturing techniques. Finally, there will be a lab-based 
previous course called Measurements and Instrumentation, teaching how to design experiments involving measurements of various parameters like pressure, temperature, strain, and force using mechanical and electrical transducers. You'll also learn all about data acquisition and how to analyze huge amounts of experimental data. Finally, Senior Capstone Design class will be the culmination of your undergrad studies and involve planning and completing a project with a team to design and manufacture a product containing electrical mechanical components to solve a problem in some area of mechatronics engineering. Now moving on to the mechatronics engineering core courses. Some computer engineering related classes you will take include essentials of computer organization, covering basic computer architecture, operating systems, compilers, CPUs, as well as arithmetic logic unit design. Computer networking and communications technology is another important class introducing technology protocols and techniques used to connect computers to other computers and hardware components and how to design and monitor computer networks. Several electrical engineering courses will also be required, such as Electronics 1, which talks about the operating characteristics of diodes, field effect transistors, bipolar junction transistors, MOS transistors, and op amps, as well as the analysis, design, and simulation of different types of circuits. Electronics 2 class is a continuation of Electronics 1 and covers advanced analog devices and circuits and their uses in the real world. Digital Logic class covers the design, analysis, and simulation of digital circuits including Boolean algebra, logic gates, as well as encoders and decoders. Then there's Linear Systems class that covers the basic theory of continuous and discrete systems, emphasizing linear time invariant systems in both the time and frequency domain. Topics you'll learn include linearity, time invariance, causality, stability, convolution, and Fourier and Laplace transforms. You'll also be required to take Control System class introducing feedback control systems under both transient and steady state conditions and how to model control systems leveraging block diagrams as well as transfer functions. A couple advanced mechatronics courses that you will take include, of course, mechatronics class focusing on sensors, actuators, computer control systems, robotics, automation, and intelligent devices, and the role that these components play in different industries. Another important class is robotics, where you'll get a chance to construct and program a robot system. Topics you'll learn include kinematics, position and orientation, trajectories, navigation, closed loop control, obstacle detection, manipulation of objects, and motion control. We're now down to our last two courses, the first being automation, which provides an overview of important concepts such as analog, digital, input and output, as well as continuous, synchronous, and asynchronous processes and automated machinery. You'll also learn how to program a programmable logic circuit used to control manufacturing processes and create simple programs for a set of control requirements. Lastly, hydraulics and pneumatics class will introduce basic fluid dynamics as well as the functionality and design of pumps, motors, cylinders, and valves. Now that we have a good sense of the curriculum, let's take a look at some potential job positions, the annual salary and job outlook of mechatronic engineers. As a mechatronics engineer, you will be able to work in a wide variety of industries. For example, if you're interested in e-commerce, you could work on a mechanical assembly and embedded systems design of automatic guided vehicles that fulfill orders in a warehouse at Amazon as a robotics engineer specializing in mechatronics. If you wanted to work in the medical industry, you could develop algorithms, features, and microcontroller software critical to the performance and safety of surgical robots, as well as automated procedures for testing surgical instruments as an automation or software engineer. You can also work in the aerospace industry as a robotics engineer at NASA to come up with designs and solutions for state-of-the-art robotic systems used in future space exploration missions. Besides mechatronics engineer, other jobs you can apply for with a mechatronics engineering degree include software engineer, controls engineer, systems engineer, automation engineer, mechanical engineer, and electrical engineer. The median salary of mechatronics engineers is $89,250, while the lowest 10% and highest 10% made $58,000 and $140,000 respectively. However, because mechatronics is a very new field, there is not a lot of reliable job data yet. But based on my understanding, the job growth will be very similar to software engineering at around 25%, which is just off the charts compared to the overall engineering field of 5%. 
With the rise of robotics, automation, and AI, the job outlook for mechatronics engineers looks very bright, and the number of jobs will continue to rapidly increase for the foreseeable future across numerous industries. Aside from the curriculum, salary, and job outlook, the last component we'll look at is prestige. For some people, it's all about the respect. Now, the way I've defined prestige is how well known is the company you work at, and I assume that the larger the company, the more prestige it has. For all intents and purposes, we'll assume that the job title is not correlated with prestige. So looking at the top 100 Fortune 500 companies, here are the ones that offer mechatronics engineering jobs in decreasing order of total revenue. Amazon, Apple, Alphabet, CVS Health, Amerisource Bergen, Costco, Cigna, AT&T, Chevron, Kroger, Ford, Verizon, General Motors, Meta Platforms, Comcast, Target, Johnson & Johnson, FedEx, Humana, Wells Fargo, Pfizer, Citigroup, PepsiCo, Intel, Procter & Gamble, General Electric, IBM, MetLife, Prudential, Albertsons, Walt Disney, Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, HP, Boeing, Morgan Stanley, HCA Healthcare, Avvi, Tesla, Charter Communications, Caterpillar, ConocoPhillips, Tyson Foods, Nike, John Deere, American Express, Stone X Group, TIAA, Oracle, Thermo Fisher, Coca-Cola, General Dynamics, CHS, USAA, Nucor, and Massachusetts Mutual Life Insurance. All right, summarizing everything we talked about. The curriculum for mechatronics engineering includes a lot of math, physics, engineering design analysis, and seeks to develop a problem-solving mindset. Mechatronics engineering classes focus more on developing a systems level understanding of product design and encompass not only core mechanical engineering theory, but also electrical, computer, and software engineering concepts. Moving on to salary, mechatronics engineers on average make $89,250 while the lowest 10% and highest 10% made $58,000 and $140,000 respectively. Finally, you can also expect to work at many big name companies like Amazon, Google, and Tesla as a mechatronics engineer. And overall, I think this is a great discipline for any of you who are interested in robotics and automation and how the mechanical, electrical, and software elements work together behind the scenes to help make a product more intelligent. All right, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.